one of the one of the interesting things we've had happen with our band that we didn't expect. We started uh, back in uh, 2001 is when we first kind of started touring, got signed, and everything. And uh, our our band's called Cutlass. Um, the idea behind that is that Christ took our cuts and our bruises and our beating, leaving us without those cuts, and therefore cut less because um, we're we're redeemed in what Christ did for us, and we don't need to bear those. Um, but at that time. Um, the issue of, of cutting was not really uh, on the forefront of, uh, of something that was really common. And uh, over the next few years, we found that it actually became something that was very common. Um, and we got to meet a lot of young people at our shows and, and through email and, um, of people who were really wrestling with that. And uh, something that we didn't expect or didn't realize was going to happen is uh, as people began to search for help, they would type into Google, you know, no cutting, cut less and they would find our band um, as a result of the name and, and the correspondence and, and it's been really neat to be able to share with people um, and to be able to talk people through some of these issues and some of the things uh, that they're dealing with and the number one thing I hear from people that, that are cutting themselves and physically harming themselves is that they would rather feel physical pain than have to deal with the emotional pain that they don't know what to deal with inside and so inside they're broken they're, they're hurting and they say I don't know what to do with this emotion. I don't know what to do with this, this emotional pain. Um, and so they, so they inflict physical pain because they understand that and that makes sense. And, and the problem is, is that that physical pain then becomes addicting. And, and over time they turn to that more and more and the deeper their emotional wounds become, the more that they inflict physical pain upon themselves. And it becomes a really dangerous downward cycle. Um, and we've gotten to see it happen in, in many, many young people. And, and so if you say, this is where I'm at, this is exactly what I'm at, I'm searching for help, I, I'm saying, man, I need, to, I need to stop, and I have, I admit, I've got hurts in my life, I've been harmed, I've been hurt by other people, my emotions are, I don't understand them, I don't know what to do with these, with these feelings. Um, may I first suggest to you and, and share with you one thing, the one stability uh, foundation, the one foundation I have in my life that brings stability to my life is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you say, well, well how can that fix my issue? How can that fix my problem? My problems are too big. My problems are too great. The reality is that I believe that Christ died for all of our sins. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And, and just like our band name talks about, Christ bore the cuts that we deserve. You know what? We've all made mistakes. We've all got sin in our life. We all have issues. But the reality is that Christ died to make us whole. And the whole concept there is that He has paid the price for us to wrap us in His righteousness. And what that looks like is when the Bible says the wages of sin is death, that means that if you've ever done anything wrong, if sin has happened, then you deserve to die. You know, if you, if you do something wrong and the law says you have, to, you have to pay the penalty of death, that's the repercussions for your actions. That's exactly what the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. So somebody has to die. And ultimately Jesus said, I don't owe that cost. I have never committed a crime, I have never sinned, and so I'm going to pay that price for you. In your place, I'm going to die for you. That penalty has to be paid. Somebody's got to pay it. I'm going to do the time for you to set you free. And then the Bible says that after he, was, he, he died and, and descended into hell, broke the, the gates of sin and death, that he rose again three days later and, and, uh, and, lives, and we can live eternally with him because of, he paid the price for us. And now the Bible says that as God looks at us, we, he sees us through the justification of what Jesus has done. And what that means is he, because he's paid the price, we, our slate is clean. We have nothing to worry about. Christ has put that upon himself. And so the pain and the hurt and the feelings and the emotions that you have, you can put those things upon Christ and say, God, I can't deal with these. I don't know how to deal with these. My life is a wreck and, uh, and, and I, I need help. I need help. And I can tell you that God has been the foundation for my life that has brought stability, that when I'm floundering and I'm struggling and I'm, I don't know what to do, I can turn to Him and He says, I'm here for you, and, and just cry out to me. And so that's, that's the first thing. You need to understand and, and have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Once you have that relationship with Jesus Christ, I would encourage you to find a pastor in a church in your area that can help practically apply the principles that Jesus uh, has given to us in the Bible. And those things, you know, that a lot of people think the Bible is a book of rules and regulations. Well, you can't do this, and you can't do that, and this is what, you know, the things that are okay and not okay. But in reality, the Bible is a guidebook for us to learn how to live our lives in a happy, meaningful way. 
If you say, man, I want a happy life, I want a fulfilling life, I want a life that is more than just going through, you know, 60 to 80 years of just kind of doing whatever, working a job, going to school, interacting with other people. I want something that's meaningful. Um, the Bible is our handbook and how to have a meaningful, happy, fulfilled life. And, and if you look at it through that lens, then uh, it makes so much more sense. And I've found uh, just in my own experience that the more that I live the way that the Bible teaches, the happier I am, the more fulfilled I am. So if I encourage you, first of all, open your heart to Jesus Christ. He'll change your life. And then secondly, get involved in a church. Find a pastor who can mentor you, who can help you, who can pray with you through the times that you're feeling weak. When you're going, man, I, I don't know. I don't know how to deal with my emotions again. I want to turn back to cutting. I want to turn back to physical harm in order to make sense of all this. Uh, having somebody to keep you accountable, somebody you can check in with and pray with, and, and that someone that knows the Bible and can help teach you and, and direct you in a positive way is super key and super valuable. So I'd encourage you to do those things, and I really believe that, that God will change your life, and, uh, and He can rescue you out of that dark place that you're in right now. I've seen so many testimonies of people that have been in the very situation that you may be in and how God has rescued them out and now they're living happy, fulfilled lives and God is using them in a very powerful and wonderful way. And so we want you guys to know that God loves you. He died for you. He doesn't care how much crap you've been through. And uh, he says, I died for all of that. I've covered all of that. Will you please come and be wrapped in my righteousness? And be clothed in my righteousness. Make all the cuts and the sins and the bruising and the beatings and all that go away. And, and I want to be that dad, that father in your life that loves you unconditionally, that covers you no matter what. And, uh, and the more you learn about that and the more that you understand that, man, it will change your life forever.